my name is Zhao Yu. I'm, I'm from uh, Baidang's uh, network engineer team. Uh, today I'm going to present our work, uh, Crescent, emulating heterogeneous production network at scale. So here's the outline for today's talk. Um, so I'll first introduce the background and the uh, motivation of our work, uh, then uh, the challenges we're facing. Uh, to address those challenges, uh, we propose a system called Crescent, a distributed uh, network emulator. Uh, I will cover the main ideas and the details of the Crescent later. Uh, then I will show the uh, uh, evaluation result. At the end, uh, we will uh, discuss the future directions uh, and summarize this talk. So a little bit background of our network. Python's network consists of uh, different networks at different scales, uh, and the ones including a global one and the regional ones. Uh, we're also using third-party cloud services, uh, which we call uh, virtual data center networks, or VDCs. Uh, and our data center network follows the typical uh, cluster structure uh, with different layers uh, of switches, uh, namely Tor, aggregation, span, as shown in the figure. In particular, uh, we call the high-level uh, devices in our network, uh, including the one and the span level devices, uh, the core devices. And the rest of the devices we call non-core devices. So uh, with a little bit background, uh, next let's take a look at the why we're doing this work. Uh, as shown in the figure, uh, uh, our network uh, scale keeps increasing. Uh, uh, so does the network uh, maintenance on network changes. Uh, and unexpectedly, uh, the network incidents uh, caused by those network changes also increased uh, dramatically. So if we let the trend keep going, it could lead to a, a, a more business loss and can uh, cause a, a, significant, a significant negative uh, impact on our users. As a result, we must bend this curve to uh, reduce the incident caused by uh, network changes, which is the goal of this work. So here we show an instant example. Uh, in this instant, network operators plan to uh, prepend the AS pass on a global one device to uh, make the AS pass runs from the original DC uh, to the global one the same as the other DCs connect to the global one. But accident uh, accidentally, they use a, a S number, a wrong AS number, which is a global one's AS number to do this AS pass prepend operation. Uh, which leads to an IBGP S pass loop on the global one. And um, more complicatedly, uh, we have different vendor devices in our global one. Uh, and some vendors do S pass uh, loop prevention for IBGP, but some don't. So it leads to the case that the prefix of the original DC uh, get withdrawal uh, from the DCs that connect to the uh, vendor's device uh, with the S pass loop prevention. Uh, like the device C here, and uh, uh, the prefix does not get withdrawn from the, uh, the DCs connect to the uh, global one device uh, without, uh, with, uh, without a, a loop prevention mechanism. So two quick takeaways from the incident like this. The first is the vendor specific behaviors are hard to prevent uh, due to the unwillingness of uh, VSBs. Uh, the second is uh, emulating only the device under test, the DUTs, is insufficient to catch the impact of a uh, change like this. So uh, I will use uh, the, the incident example to explain this point. So in, in, in this instance, if we want to reproduce this incident, we, uh, uh, we need to at least include the DUTA and all the global one devices uh, to reproduce this instance. Then we need to inject the route from the original DC uh, and test the mob, the method of a procedure, then we can uh, detect uh, the unexpected route withdrawal events on the global one. If we are using other tools to test, for example, the end-to-end -end reachability uh, property, we may also need to include the original one, uh, uh, the original DC, and the one of the DC that withdraw the original DC's prefix. So 
we want to have a way to automatically detect these uh, unexpected behavior, routing behaviors in our production network before uh, we applying uh, those changes to our production network. And there are already uh, many works from academia and the industry uh, doing something similar. So we broadly categorize them into two uh, clusters, uh, uh, emulation and simulation. By simulation, I mean uh, uh, the CPV, control plan verification. One of the uh, famous control plan verification tool is called Batfish. And uh, uh, we found that Batfish cannot cover all the vendors uh, in our network. Uh, another uh, CPV tool is called Huoyan from Alibaba. Uh, it can model the VSBs, but with a very high cost and still has the risk uh, when uh, some VSBs are unknown in advance. While in the same, uh, uh, in, uh, in the area of uh, network emulation, uh, most of the uh, commercial and open source network emulators, such as uh, EVENG and the GNS3, cannot scale out easily. The only uh, exception is the crystal net, which can uh, uh, support high scalability while maintaining high fidelity with the vendor's uh, native image. But we found the safe boundary algorithm proposed by CrystalNet is not safe for our network. Uh, because uh, we have a lot of AS pass replacement uh, configuration in our network, and uh, uh, the blast radius of a uh, network uh, instance is hard to predict. So the safe boundary algorithm is not so safe for us. Uh, in spite of that, uh, we still think that the uh, network emulation is uh, uh, more promising compared to the uh, network simulation, uh, given that the, uh, the shortcoming of a network simulation is not easily, uh, cannot be easily overcome uh, in a short period of time. But if we, we're using emulation, then we're facing a few challenges. The first is uh, we call the cost versus uh, uh, coverage uh, challenge. Uh, so. Uh, because emulation is uh, much more costly, so ideally if we can, uh, uh, we could emulate our entire network, all the change induced uh, incidents can be detected in advance. Uh, however, we don't have the infinite resource, so we cannot uh, emulate the entire network. Then how can we find a, a safe boundary to build the emulation network to capture all those three incidents? The second, even if we can find a boundary, it is still possible that the uh, emulated network is a fairly large uh, test bed that we cannot fit into a single server. Uh, then, how, then we must be able to scale out uh, this uh, uh, em uh, emulation environment to uh, accommodate a large emulated network. Uh, last, uh, emulation alone cannot verify network at scale. So it is infeasible for network emulators, uh, network operators to uh, check the network uh, hop by hop by themselves. So we need to provide a, a, a simple way for our users to uh, detect the uh, unexpected behaviors uh, uh, to, uh, so that they, the, uh, they can detect those uh, issues more easily. Overall, the question is how to emulate a large uh, scale enterprise network effectively with a limited resource. So before answering that question, let's uh, take a step back, uh, looking, forward, uh, looking backward at our network incident in the past three years. Here are the key findings. The first is uh, one third of the incidents were caused by the network changes, including the configuration and the topology updates. So all these uh, incidents uh, can actually can be uh, avoided uh, if we test them thoroughly uh, in advance. The second is the 30% of these incidents involve VSBs, vendor specific behaviors. And, uh, uh, last point is 50% uh, network changes uh, apply to core devices, while over 90% of these network uh, incidents happen on core devices. Then the question is why? Here is a, a key observation, uh, which is so-called network symmetry. Uh, it means that for non-core devices, they are highly standardized, sharing a similar uh, configuration, similar topology, Planned updates are also conducted in a batched automatic manner, while the high-level uh, core devices, this is not true. Uh, they are connecting to different uh, external providers uh, with various uh, uh, business-driven uh, requirements, and the topology uh, structure has to follow the geographic affinity uh, relationship. So inspired by this observation, we propose a system called Christian. To address the cost versus coverage challenge, we propose using a long time running test bed with all core devices 
and uh, select the non-core devices, which is the main idea of this, uh, uh, th this work. So to address the scalability uh, challenge, uh, we propose a, a novel partitioning algorithm to scale out the uh, canary testbed, uh, because the canary te testbed is still a large testbed. To address the efficient verification challenge, uh, we combine the emulation with uh, automated uh, monitoring and the verification tools to help our users to automatically detect network issues. So next, let's dive into the implementation of our system. So Crescent is implemented similarly as most of uh, network emulators. Uh, each device is a containerized, uh, which means uh, either uh, uh, we, we run a native switch OS in the container directly, or run a VM uh, in the container directly. For the links between the containers on the same host, we use a VS pair. And for the links across the uh, host, uh, we use an OVS bridge with a VXLAN uh, terminal. However, we found uh, the cross-host li uh, link creation overhead is much higher than the same uh, host link uh, creation. Uh, and uh, the overhead is linear to the number of uh, cross-host links, which means the more links exist, the longer it takes to create a new link. So we need to solve this problem. Uh, to solve this problem, we, we need to minimize the number of cross-host links. It, should be, uh, it can be modeled uh, as an optimization problem, as shown here. So it is a well-known NPR problem. Uh, so uh, to solve this problem, we propose a heuristic gradient algorithm, uh, which is a variant of a community detection algorithm widely used in the social, uh, social network area. Uh, I will uh, skip the detail of the uh, system uh, implementation and the partition algorithm. Uh, please refer to our paper for more details if you're interested. So next, uh, since canary testbed only uh, contains uh, uh, some selected uh, non-core devices, so what if uh, some devices are not uh, included in canary testbed? Then we need to uh, uh, connect those uh, uh, DUTs to our canary testbed. And uh, before the connection, we need to run an expansion algorithm to find the paths uh, from the uh, DUT to, uh, DUTs to the canary. And during the connection time, uh, we're going to connect the DOTs uh, to Canary uh, by uh, dynamically creating the links. Once the DOTs are connected, we follow user provided a, a mob and the run verification task at uh, the end of each step in the mob. And in the production, we're running multiple Canary test pad to serve the user's requ uh, multiple requests at the same time. The automated monitoring and the verification module include the following tools, uh, a lightweight uh, pin mesh to, uh, to proactively uh, detect the end-to-end -end reachability failure, and a, a raw differ uh, to, uh, to detect the uh, change in the day plan on each individual switch, and a config checker to detect any config violation against the predefined rules. Last, we implement a homebrew day, uh, day plan verifi uh, verification tool uh, to detect loops, black holes, and ECMP reduction automatically. Overall, uh, we combine uh, emulation uh, closely with the monitoring and the verification tools to help our users to detect network issues uh, uh, more easily. So in the evaluation, we compare the, uh, the partition algorithm against the two other uh, uh, algorithm, uh, two other schemes. Uh, the first is gym menu, uh, the other is uh, random. For the geo menu uh, scheme, we, uh, we assign the different nodes to host based on their uh, uh, graphical affinity. And uh, it is done manually by a network expert in our company. And the random scheme just simply assign the nodes to different hosts uh, randomly. So in this experiment, we first evaluate the connection time, uh, which is the time to connect DUTs to the canary. Uh, as shown in the, uh, in the left figure, uh, Chris and uh, Jill Manu outperform the random uh, scheme by uh, two to three times. Uh, and uh, because there are less existing cross host links uh, with uh, uh, Chris and uh, Jill Manu uh, partition scheme. On the other hand, if we take a look at the time to create a, a canary test bed, uh, uh, it may take uh, tens of minutes to create a new one, uh, as shown on the, uh, uh, in, the left uh, in the right figure. So in summary, the connection uh, approach saved up to 30%, uh, 30 times compared to creating a new test bed from scratch. And the coverage is the same for both, uh, uh, for both approaches. 
At the same time, we also notice that the geo menu uh, stops scaling because there are hyperscale data centers in our uh, network that cannot be easily uh, uh, divided manually. So, so here shows the result uh, for the uh, uh, in production deployment res uh, result. Uh, we finally uh, bend the cur uh, curve. Uh, after rolling out uh, uh, a crescent uh, to our production, and it helped to reduce the uh, incidence. Uh, and uh, unsurprisingly, uh, the most common detected issue uh, errors uh, uh, in the mob is uh, typos, and some incidents, uh, we still miss some incidents, uh, especially when it involves the external uh, service providers like the SPs and the uh, clouds. And uh, uh, crescent is also using our uh, 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 traffic engineer test, uh, 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 which is also a major use case for our system. So for the future work, uh, I will uh, just uh, skip them. And uh, uh, in summary, uh, network change, a uh, major source of network incidents, and we propose a distributed network emulator uh, uh, to help us test the network change in advance. And to achieve a high scalability, we propose a novel application algorithm. And our in-production deployment shows the crescent helped reduce the change-induced network incidents. And uh, thank you.